All right, welcome back. It's Friday, two o'clock. We're gonna be having stories with the love master. I am the love master, Craig Shoemaker. Oh, <laughs> hey, what are you talking about? Let me, hear, let me hear a love master line. Yeah, baby. <laughs> you want me to stir your coffee from here? I'll teabag you. Oh. <laughs> I'll teabag you? Isn't that something the love master would say? I'll teabag you? From what I've read. No. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, here's the actual Craig Shoemaker. I'm, uh, <laughs> Sergio. That's me, some people Sergio. Have wanted, some people have wanted you to be on. Little champ, by the way. So, okay, now you can go off to where you were before. Oh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> this is little champ. <laughs> Hi, little you champ. Center? Ah, there you are. Am I on? You're on. You're on. Hi, everybody. Our third day in a row of uh, hopefully offering some healing powers of laughter to you. You know, when you laugh, it oxygenates your body. Healing endorphins are being released. Stress is relieved. We're all in a bunch of stress. And my firm belief is if you buy into the panic and the fear, not to say you should be cautious, but to buy into the actual fear your mind is going to tell you it's going to make you more susceptible to whatever is out there. By the way, there are plenty of other things that are out there, common cold, flus, and everything. So well, let's have some laughter. Sergio, speaking of you, I wanted to tell this story yesterday. I've got a lot of stories here that I've you reminded me of. Because um, can I out you? As a... <laughs> I'm in the witness protection program, so no, you cannot out me. <laughs> I, I can't, really? I, I can't out you? What do you mean by out me? <laughs> out you as a, a, a man who likes men? Um, now, I like men too. It was just a face. I think I'll grow out of it. Uh, it <laughs> that's what they say. That's, that's what they say. That's what my grandmother says. It's a, it's a phase. Um, I had an experience in uh, San Francisco, where you're from. Now, you've never heard this story, Sergio. But uh, you reminded me of it yesterday, so it's, I teased it and said I would tell the story today. Uh, I'd like to get into some, um, some past stuff. Uh, well, actually, stories are all past stuff. It's all stuff that happened before. I was brand new in the business, and uh, is anybody even paying attention right now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there, do we have anybody listening or watching? 27 people so far. 27? Jeez, we went from 30. It's just starting. Huh? What's You're, that? We've only been on a minute. Okay. Well, you were on for two of them. So uh, I was brand new in the business, my first television show ever, national television show. I, geez, I forget the name of it. Bill Rafferty was the host. And it was something, you know, comic this, comic that, whatever it was. It wasn't Comics Unleashed, but it was a show in San, shot in San Francisco. And I was very, very excited uh, to do it, but I was on the road a lot and I was, Whoa, look who's like, liking me now. Jeez, okay. One more follower. Any questions? Do you have any questions? He's <laughs> shaking like a leaf. <laughs> so uh, I, I was meeting my manager at the time, my brand new manager, and I said, I'll meet you at the airport. And I was on the road and I had a duffel bag filled with stuff. And these were the days of security wasn't as tight where literally the captain was like waiting for me. Uh, hey, Craig, we've been... We've been holding up the plane, uh, the, the time to get on. It was, it was like that, there was no TSA. So I had this big giant duffel bag filled with dirty clothes that I'd been on the road for a while. And I show up and I put them on and my, my manager was buttoned up, his, his first client, he was so excited. I get there and he got a little taste of the way I operate, especially back then, that was a mess. So we take the limousine, they send a limousine, and I just, this is show business you dream about. Limousine, the Fairmount Hotel, which was one of the most famous, classic, iconic hotels in San Francisco, or even the world, the Fairmount. They had matches and candies with my name on them, imprinted. This, this is when matches were actually used. So I couldn't believe it, but I, then I got, to the, I got to the hotel room and I'm sharing my room with Rick, uh, my manager. And we're in San Francisco, so San Francisco is kind of known as a gay capital, wouldn't you say? Sergio, isn't it? I'm not being... Uh, yes, but if you go anywhere outside of San Francisco, you realize it's not. LA is much gayer than we are. Is that right? New York, Columbia. 
Bogota, Colombia is way gayer. Oh, yeah. I was just way in gay. Puerto Vallarta, by oh, the way. Oh, way gayer. Yes, very, very much so. Which, by the way, I am. I love when gay men are around because they make me feel a little more attractive. I have never in my life had a woman uh, pull up in a wheelchair like happened to me when I lived in West Hollywood. And Would you like a ride, big boy? I've been waiting for it ever since. Not one single woman has ever done that in a wheelchair. So uh, I'm a happily married man now, but if any woman does make me that offer in a wheelchair, I'll just call my wife and get permission, okay? Because I have to have that manifested at some point in my life. Rrr, growled at me, it was awesome. I wear short shorts, if ever my self-esteem was low, which is often, I'm a stand-up comic. So I get in the uh, hotel room and I'm with Rick, starving. But I said beforehand, I said, geez, Rick, I, I have to uh, get my clothes uh, washed. And I had no idea the expense of a hotel, how expensive a hotel is to wash or dry clean your clothes. But I was doing the show the next day. So the guy walks in and, you know, can I do an impression? <laughs> it was very effeminate. He goes, hello, welcome to the Fairmont. I said, he goes, I hear you're here for, I'm here for your laundry and your dry cleaning. And I said, well, yeah, just everything in that bag right there. So he takes, and he practically used tongs He's placing it into the bag. He was just disgusted. I thought I saw a clothes pin on his nose and, he's, and he put them all in there. And at the time there was a fashion, I always thought I was into fashion, ACA Joe. Have you ever heard of Akka Joe? Mm -hmm. Akka Joe was these you know, baggy, uh, semi um, uh, MC Hammer pants. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was hammer time. It was hammer time for me when I had a whole you know, Akka Joe, Caravici, Gerbo, these were all the fashions of the time. Brand new in San Francisco, brand new television show, very excited, but brand new in the career. He walks in, he takes my dry cleaning away. And then we order room service and I had nothing left. So I had a robe on, there was one robe with pink trim and one robe with blue trim. And Rick and I got in our robes. And of course, there's assumptions that are going to be made. The guy walks in with our, our uh, food and he puts the rolling table between the two beds so we can have our candlelight dinner together, me and my manager, which everyone in that room, you know, if somebody's coming in, they're assuming that we're together, that we're a couple. So we're eating the dinner, then he puts the dinner down, and, and then I get a call on the phone. He goes, Hi, Mr. Shoemaker, this is Vince, your, your valet. <laughs> I just thought you want to know your dry cleaning bill will come to $139. And I don't think we want to spend that on Akka Joe. <laughs> it's like cackles me. We don't, we don't want to spend this on Akka Joe. But he was right because I did not want to spend that kind of money. So I said, I keep a pair of socks <laughs> I keep, and, the, uh, and the blue shirt. And bring everything else back. And he goes, this is the lie he says to me. Hmm, I assume you mean the socks that match? <laughs> None of my socks matched. And so he brings everything back in the bag. And that was the story I wanted to tell you, Sergio. But you'd been so busy with camera work over here, you weren't even listening. Oh, I, could, I heard every bit of it. Oh, I heard every bit of it. Just weren't entertained by it. <laughs> well, members want to know, where's your members jacket only? I had a members only jacket. Oh, there you go. I was had a members only jacket. It was, uh, I really did think that I would be a member of some club. But definitely the club was... The club of no one will look at you in that jacket without laughing. That was the jack. That was the member that I was. Um, I had a mullet cut. Uh, this was really, really, really happening back then. So uh, I wanted to also tell the story of the how comedy began for me. Uh, it started in I'd say fourth grade, where I told a story about my mom beating the shit out of me. <laughs> so, I had spilled, I had broken this big bottle and she threw me all over the room and I'm in fourth grade. I told Mrs. Stout's class this story and they were all doing this, like they were doing this thing where I, we shouldn't be laughing because it's child abuse, but I would never go today. You can never tell a story and I killed. I just got laugh after laugh and that was the first thing and I said, maybe I should try comedy. My very first joke, this is my first joke. My last name is Shoemaker. So I said, hey, did you hear about my shoe factory? It burnt down. Some big heel started it. <laughs> a 
lot of souls were lost. Oh, no. Killed. Killed back in... Hey, when you're eight, nine, not That's bad crazy. material. No. Hey, on words. Okay, not bad. And uh, so that was the start of it. And then uh, I was performing in the lunchroom at this law firm at Schneider, Harrison, Siegel, and Lewis in Philadelphia. Big law firm procedure. And I was going to go to law school. That was my intent. And, I, and a couple days into that, I said, N enough of this for me. But I did love entertaining in the lunchroom. And we had a guy, Jim Mardinley, hopefully he's watching right now. As a matter of fact, I saw Joanne McEntee. I saw her recently. We, we hung out in Philly when we were doing a TV show there. She was at my very first show, was Jim Mardinley in the lunchroom. He was a guitarist, he had a band, and he said, would you like to do perform between sets of our band? Uh, and you know, when they had to take a, a break, and I went up on stage, it was not a comedy crowd, it was um, all African American in the audience, except for my uh, about four or five uh, white friends from the suburbs, and they came and supported this brand new comedian. I was 17 at the time, and uh, 106, 107 degrees in West Philadelphia, Sandy Supper Club, 109th Street, just you know, out of it. And I went up, and I said, "What material am I going to do?" So uh, this was my first joke. This is now back then, you could tell. I'm, I'm going to tell another uh, gay story because that was um, a feminine gay. But I do you know who Truman Capote is. Oh my goodness! So yes. Truman Capote was very much a feminine, uh, famous person, smart. writer. He, he wrote In Cold Blood. Very smart. And he. Um, so the joke was this. I said, <laughs> this guy. Truman Capote's at a bar, a Western bar, and uh, a guy walks in, a big, handsome cow rustler. He goes, damn, I'm so, I'm so, man, I haven't seen anything in a long time, but out on the road, I, I'm so horny I could screw a cow. To which he hears, moo, moo. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Can you believe I stayed with comedy after that joke? <laughs> And the other one was I, I did I a celebrity smoking pot, and I had the characters from Mayberry smoking pot, oh, no. I had, and it ended with Curly from the Three Stooges. I certainly. <laughs> this is a very committed bit. I really got into this bit. Ended up now. ended up ended up on the ground in a circle like Curly. <laughs> hey, Mo, hey, Larry, I'm high. So I really got into it, and I ended up. That was my big closer, and I was performing at my college at the time, and I got so many parking tickets. I parked. I had a '66 Cadillac Ambulance, Blakely Burrow, bright orange, a hearse, of which everyone would pull over. It was amazing. I'd be on. The, Jersey, the Philadelphia Turnpike, and everyone would move over assuming I was an ambulance. And if they didn't, I gave them a little oh, oh, oh. It was awesome to have this ambulance. My father, the Wheeler Dealer, I visited him once, and I had a nice, decent car. He traded it because he says, hey, you're gonna need this in college. You can put all your, all your gear back there. Uh, gear included a lot of pot. We had little fans in the back, I guess for the ambulance, they needed little fans. And I would make it all, all the way to college with no problem with the traffic because I would just put the horns and the lights on. But I parked in the president of the school. I parked in his parking spot. Uh -oh. And I accrued hundreds of dollars of parking tickets. So I could not pay them. There was no way I was going to pay them. I could barely pay anything. And they said, you can perform at his inaugural ball, a black tie inaugural ball. I said, sure. And they said, they'll wipe away the tickets. I'm in. They said, we heard you're a comedian. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And I didn't realize the black tie crowd, not the crowd for celebrity smoking pot with, uh, with Floyd. Ooh, ooh, I'm hazy, candy. Ooh, yeah. yeah not, not the crowd for them. And uh, I, the visual I have, I will never forget it. I still have this very strong visual of doing curly on the floor of the presidential quarters where he lived. This black tie, intimate affair, and I'm on the ground <laughs> saying to myself, 
What the hell are you? I'm doing this on the floor of the president's quarters, thinking to myself, what the hell are you doing? But comedy has led to everything. It's led to everything that we're doing here. It's led to a career. It's led to uh, laughs. And hopefully we're bringing you some here today because we all know the situation that we're in and we need a little comic relief. We need a little laughter. Uh, guess what they're asking for? Guess what they're asking for? Take love a Master. Guess. They want Love Master? Outside of that. A Barney Fife? <laughs> right, I'll tell my Barney Fife story. <laughs> they keep asking for that. I don't want to do, you know, here's Barney Fife with a yeast infection, you, um, know, you know, or whatever. You know. Something about Barney Fife crosses the love master. So I'm not doing bits for my act. I'll tell you the damn story about Don Knotts, the actor, Barney Fife. He, um, I do a pretty good Barney Fife to the point where he saw it live on Comic Relief. In like 1997, big moment for me, but brand new again out here. And this was my Whoopi got me on the show, Whoopi Goldberg, and very excited. <laughs> this was Universal Studios, big audience. It's going out on HBO, very excited. And then I'm doing Barney, but he happened to be on that show on Comic Relief as Don Knotts. It was they were celebrating the Steve Allen show. He's backstage, very much older at the time. Steve Allen is standing next to him, and so many people said that this is what they observed. I'm now live on stage. He's looking me in the monitor. He had to look really close because his eyesight was bad. And he turns to uh, he turns to uh, <laughs> to Steve Allen, and in an older voice, he does me pretty good, doesn't he, Steve? And then they pose us next to each other. I did a press conference, which was so odd for me. I went from complete obscurity to all of a sudden, you know, kind of famous. Chris Rock was the other breakout star. I don't, whatever happened to Chris Rock? I, you know, I don't know. We, yeah, we all see what happened to me. Obscurity. I'm in front of 12 people on a Facebook Live. <laughs> Chris Rock is doing another Netflix special for $40 million. Anyway, I digress. They brought him in. They brought Don Knotts in. And uh, they said, do Barney, do dueling Barneys. I'm up there going, all right, Andy, nip it in the bud. There are two rules at the rock, number one. So, and he turns, because he, he's no, not cat, and he goes, well, I can't do that anymore. Look at you. You do me better than me. <laughs> and ended up looping him in the movie Pleasantville, if you know what looping is. Mm -hmm. he, couldn't make, he couldn't make it, and I played the narrator in Pleasantville as my voice. And then he, they said, well, the editor, Billy Goldenberg, happened to be, become a huge editor, Oscar winner, is one of my friends, Temple University. He calls me in to replace Don Knotts. So if you watch the movie, and I had to do him as an older guy, because he played the TV repairman, I had to learn how to do him, not as Barney Five, oh. not as Mr. Furley even, this is him as the TV repairman, replaced his voice, half of the movie, is my voice imitating him. Like if you see, there's a scene with a telestrator and it's me going, boom, what do you call that right there, bud? They're forbidden fruit here in Pleasantville. I'm your TV repairman. <laughs> so watch the movie now, Pleasantville, very good movie. Did and we all need a little Pleasantville. Huh? Did you say you narrated that film? I was a narrator for oh. a whole other scene. Oh, okay. At least I get, I still get some, uh, some residual checks. Oh, to, I've never seen it. I'll have to check have it out. Have you seen Pleasantville? No. Pleasantville's a great movie. I don't watch Christian films. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, you'll see, the, watch the movie. It's a, it's, listen, we've got plenty of time now, don't we? Uh, watch Pleasantville and you'll, you'll see. And by the way, if you do watch it, I might get, uh, probably around seven cents. Ooh. I will get a check for seven cents. I'll spend it on one thing. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll be rolling it. I got to make some money somehow. I don't know what the hell's going to happen. These gigs are canceled. Uh, I have an idea. What if we do a gig? We have 10 people maximum in the audience, and they're all six feet apart. <laughs> so I could go on stage. We've got our social distancing. We're underneath the limit, right? And we'll just continue to do the gigs. I was thinking about doing them here in our office. You know, how many of you would show up? You won't even show up on Facebook Live. I doubt they're going to come live <laughs> with the uh, with the virus being spread. So, uh, any other questions? Any questions that we can get to? Um, 
the comments disappear after a bunch of. How um, many people are, are on right now? Right now you have 80. Oh, okay, so we're getting up there, 80 yeah. people. Hi, everybody. If you have anything you want me to tell a story. Okay, that was enough of the Don Knotts and the Barney Five. I gave you plenty, that was within a story, which we try to be kind of real instead of, oh, here's a bit you've heard before, or you can get it on my, my albums or, or DVDs. Uh, I like to share stories on these Facebook Lives that you aren't gonna hear uh, or maybe never want to hear again. There are stories that I have from my life. Um, I wanted to talk about my father. Someone mentioned the mules, of which he was a uh, he ran mule rides in the Poconos. There was one that I did. We do, but did we do that on here? Or was we that talked another? about the mule story. Someone says you need to drink some water. Water. Yeah, water. Yeah. There you go. No, it, that's how you say. It. I didn't say it right. People. By the way, one of my biggest uh, problems in movie. In movies, is every movie that takes place in Philadelphia, no one knows how to do a Philadelphia accent. Silver Linings Playbook, Invincible, there's so many, one after another. The first movie I was ever in is Blowout. Not a single Philadelphia accent in these movies. So, what is the Philadelphia accent? I didn't know there was an Phil accent. Oh, oh yeah. I will admit it's one of the worst accents in history. Oh, that and Baltimore it. both kind of even. <laughs> I think it's probably feel this way. Maybe if you're in the South, you feel that way about someone from Mississippi or from Alabama. It's whatever it is. We don't like our accents many times, right? So, I have this ongoing. I can't believe another film in Philadelphia. They didn't do it again. The great Robert De Niro. In The Irishman and in Silver Linings Playbook. Wouldn't even try it. They what drop it? the R at the end. That's in New York. That's Boston or whatever. You don't drop the R. It's a hard R. You know, we used to have a commercial in Philadelphia called The Mummers. I don't know if you know. I don't know. I mean, it's <laughs> nasal. I don't know if you know who the Mummers are. But they're these, uh, they got the fancy brigade. And they got all that. They got plumes. And they plumes, they wear plumes on New Year's Day, and they, you know, I don't know where they pee, but they go up and down to Broad Street and they get judged and they play the string bands and they would have a commercial every year. Call now for this limited time only. You can get the two album set with their fur coat string band who won this year. That's a Philadelphia accent. No, oh, how can no. they not even try it if you're a great actor? Bradley Cooper's from Philadelphia and he doesn't even try the accent. He is from Philly. That's, That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Germantown Academy, it doesn't count. They're very smart and wealthy. It doesn't count. They, don't have, they drop their accent as soon as they enter. Uh, so I was talking about this one time. Uh, you know the show Parks and Recreation? Mm -hmm. I played the, uh, the head of the Liberty or Die party, and they gave me a tri-cornered hat and knickers. And what did I you say? I did two episodes. <laughs> two episodes. I wore knickers, yes. And by the way, I stole the outfit because Les Miserables, my favorite, it was coming out on film. And so I figured Star Wars, they all line up, you know, to go see the premiere, or get their first tickets, and they dress as Chewbacca and uh, Princess Leia. I thought, why don't I go dressed for the Les Mis as Jean oh. Valjean or Javert, or it's one of the characters. <laughs> so I, I, seen it, I so. took the outfit. I'm a big fan of the play, I couldn't wait. It was Christmas day. I handed my kids the gifts. I go, daddy's gonna go to Les Mis. <laughs> Oh, I said, I'm out of here. So I go Christmas morning in my outfit. Not one single person came as Eponine. There wasn't a single person dressed in character. I was the only jackass. Oh, because I took this, good for you for standing out. Good for me for standing out? Yeah. That's not good for me. That is yeah, idiot you, of me. No, you marched to the beat of your own drum. I should have joined a Facebook group of Les Mis lovers and found out that we're not going to dress this year. <laughs> we're, we're, not, <laughs> we're not dressing for this. There was no one that told me. So I was ready to sing with people while I'm in line. You thought it was Rocky Horror Picture or something? Yeah. Exactly. Or any of the, you know, people dress. You know, on Star Wars, there's a number of them. They dress, they're so excited. I was that excited. This is my thing. I like musicals. I like Les Mis. I seen I've it. seen it probably 17 times. Wow. And I've never cried as much as I, at the first time I saw it, the, uh, the guy had to come up to me with a flashlight and say, you know, it's been over for 30 minutes. <laughs> It's in there weeping. It's the most beautiful production. I've never so seen it live. I, you've no. never seen it live? Oh, I haven't seen it in any way. I I've have seen the a, movies over and over and over again. Is there such I've a thing called that. a tear blanket? I needed a tear blanket. That's how we bad We can get you one. Yeah, but only if I watch Les Mis and one scene from uh, Field of Dreams.
Miss Saigon got me crying. Miss Saigon. Okay, I've seen that a few times. That I was really young when I saw doesn't, it. Doesn't do it as much. Okay. So um, I'm on the set and I'm in this character and I'm on this parade float with Amy Poehler. She's the executive producer. She runs the entire thing. Amy's your boss, right? So just catch that, that she's there next to him in a parade float, but we're between scenes. And I hear a guy on the megaphone go, all right, everybody, we're gonna take you. Uh, we're gonna take that one again. I go, hey, Phil, he goes, how'd you know? How'd I know? <laughs> how'd, I, how'd I know? Of course you're from Philly. So he and I start talking. I'm up on the float, he's down on the ground. I said, man, I can't stand it. Every movie, have you noticed this? They never use a Philadelphia, Philadelphia accent. And Amy Poehler, I could have done this speech in front of millions of actors. I picked the one who actually did it. She goes, I did one in Baby Mama. I went, oh, you did, didn't you? <laughs> so she's the only one in the history of film. Oh, and that's I, right. And I could have been fired for my speech because she could have said, you know, oh, you don't know who I am, I'm your boss, you don't know that I do that. By the way, she sang Lay Miz with me on my first day on the set. She did. <laughs> we did the dying scene from, uh, from uh, Lay Miz when Eponine's died. I played Marius in that one. I usually oh. go for Javert. Don't you fret, Monsieur Marius, I don't feel any pain. And she's doing this with me, I just met her. And I was there, a little fall of rain can hardly hurt you now. I'm here, that's all I need to know. You will keep me safe. <laughs> I will stay with you while you are sleeping. And rain will make the flowers grow. You will live Panine, dear God above. Anyway, I'm going a little too far with this. That was my first time meeting Amy Poehler, and then it carried over to another episode where that happened, where I thought I was gonna be fired the next day. I said, I didn't mean that, Amy. I forgot to do my research. You did do a great Philadelphia accent, and Tina Fey does one on Saturday Night Live. If you ever wanna hear that, Sergio, you can look it up on YouTube. There's a whole piece that they do with Philadelphia accents going back and forth. Oh, but funny. it is an ugly accent. I have so many stories I didn't get to today. I have to tell you at home, or wherever you're watching. Sergio, I like audiences, right? I like audiences, Corey and Sergio over here. I like audiences to give me like incentive or inspire me through laughter. This is Sergio, the entire day today. Five minutes. <laughs> this doesn't make for a good audience. It's not a good audience. I, I, I need, I, so if we do this again, which we should do this, you just said, one minute. <laughs> I'll focus on the film one minute, and then you okay. focus on the okay. 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 Ooh, one minute. He makes fun of my fashion all the time. By oh, the way, yeah. today I missed He's today I met, I wore something that my my belly wouldn't come out as much. So all right, give me a couple of questions and then we'll wrap it up. They want me to keep this short. I could talk forever and I'm hoping it's entertaining you. I hope this works for you to have a little comic relief for God's sakes. Shoe thumbs up. Shoe. Tell us the story. That's my nickname, Shoe. But most people do call me Shoe. Uh, tell us, tell us on your theory yeah. of the Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's a long story. Oh, We've got to yeah. write that down. That's a long one. We'll do that next because time. Because well, listen, I would do the whole Wizard of Oz thing, but it is very long. But I, I like that idea. I'm going to write that down. Wizard of Oz. I will tease that to another time because literally these two are practically yelling at me. <laughs> That even the dog fell asleep. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. So the dog, the little champ, is asleep in your lap. So uh, any other questions I can answer real quick? Any other comments? What, what are they saying out there? All 83 of yours. Love you, Master. <laughs> love it. Oh, I'll do a couple new Love Master lines. How about yeah. that? Do they want that? Any thumbs oh, yeah, up on always. that? Love Master lines? Yep. Are they saying they want they've, it? They've been I'm only going to do it if it's time. requested. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. These are, these are new ones. <laughs> Are those the pants you wear your sister's wedding? <laughs> Starbucks, story, wear a hoodie next time. I am not. She's so famous, people be, being born. Oh, people being born. Oh, they, that's an old bit. You know what, I might pull that out next time. They said they asked that's, about I that I dropped that time. 20 years ago, but uh, I could bring that back just for this. Yeah, I think it still would work. It's, it's, it was my, that came after Celebrity Smoking Pot. It was another <laughs> classic moment of the career. Right around when Love Master did not start off as it did, it started. COVID related Love Master lines. What's that? COVID. Oh, COVID related Love Master lines? Yes. <clears throat> Speaking of spread, baby. <laughs>
Oh yeah, you might want to. Oh. Spread, you get it? Craig, I have to ask, da da da. Do you have tiny balls? I can't sit like that. <laughs> he has a mangina. <laughs> My balls are actually back here. <laughs> back here, I tucked them back here before I before I came on. Is that a thing? No, no, uh, I don't. Glare, uh, glare, something. I don't have. I no, I don't have. Uh, I don't have like uh, tea bagging balls. Just to bring it back to a to your first episode. comment, <laughs> your first comment to open up the. Uh, they're not tea bagging. I'm not that old yet. But that's what happens. They start. Where in the hell did that conversation go? No, the answer is I've somehow have learned how to put things where they, where they you know, are out of the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't do my love master lines. I no, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. All right, but you know, there is a lot to put away. Because I won a three-legged race at the picnic by myself. <laughs> yeah. We have to do keeper sweep. Are these keepers or sweepers? Oh, the new ones, sorry, let's see. These are all new ones. <clears throat> I'll have you more bow-legged than a cowboy after a colonoscopy, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Sergio, the answer is a laugh. Yeah. Uh, oh shit. Oh shit. Tea bags from China. These aren't working? I'll be all over you like a termite on a log cabin, baby. Oh yeah. I didn't even get a smile. What the? <laughs> th this is terrible. Keeper. <laughs> someone said it's a keeper. Yeah, someone said keeper. It might have been three ago, though. Keep. All right. Keeper. Keeper. Okay. We have a new episode with the Love Master next week called The Big Bang Theory, baby. Oh, yeah. I make that look like a... <laughs> <laughs> what is sweep? Oh, sweep like, is a no. What's that? Okay. Sweep is a no. Sweep is a no? Oh, well, I got to I want to figure out what they're saying sweep too. Oh, yeah. We don't Three know. Three-legged race is a keeper. Oh, a keeper. Okay, good. So I got to make notes of this, of what everybody, everybody thinks. <laughs> Thank oh you. yeah, I got a telescope. You'll see stars, baby. Oh yeah. These are my new love master lines. Keepers. Is, we have 83 people. Is it still up to 83? Three-legged race is the keeper. So Three-legged race is getting the most views. Oh, okay. The most like. Okay, good. Well, I hope you enjoyed today. These two back here, by the way, blame them. I can <laughs> hang with you for a while. We're not catching anything. We are a safe distance together, social distance. Please spread the word for God's sakes. Just tell people about, go to my YouTube channel. We're going to post these on YouTube, including your comments, by the way. Telescope be, is a keeper. Telescope is a keeper. Okay. Stars Anybody sweeper. have any comments or? Termite or, sweeper. Telescope Oh, that was keeper. a sweep. The termite. They Stars didn't keeper. Oh, okay. What about the, any questions that they have? Termite I, sweep. Do they have any questions? Or right, we got through those. I'll Long go chain. through the... the do I have to like everything? And Telescope is a keeper and three legged is a keeper, for sure. Right. I mean, I got a lot of good stories to tell Queen. about uh, about my life as a child growing up before the professional comic came in. There was all the stories that lead to being a professional comic. I'd love to talk more about my dad because I don't talk about my, my act because people think it's not true. <laughs> like the bra story, I'll tell that sometime. My dad sold bras. Like Amway meets bras, it's a story. Okay, this, oh, these are the things that form who who I am. I also want to have my mom on sometime because my mother is absolutely so funny. She used to have a segment on my radio show called "What's Bugging Barb." I'll tell you what's bugging me today. People say you do something for them instead of saying thank you. They say no worries. I don't have any no worries. I just say you're welcome. <laughs> so she gets. So she texts me all the time. She's got new buggins. So now we're going to do a book called What's Buggin' Barb and Craig? Because it turns out we have very similar buggins. People that talk in movie theaters drives both of us nuts. Oh my God. That I go out of my mind. I have to stalk the movie theater. To, so they look like talkers. They're talking already, even though it's the previews. I can already smell them out. And uh, we almost had a riot in the movie theater the last movie I went to with my friend Jimmy. This, this uh, woman just just started screaming at this guy. I was, I, what the hell? I have her bounced. I actually sure. told, I told on her. Oh, I told the manager. Field of Dreams story. What's yeah. that about? The Field of Dreams. This is not a funny story, but um, my son Justin. Hey, Justin, come on out here. Justin's playing games here. We have a gaming business, by the way. 
Just We're saying. Bringing laughter. It's called Laughter Heals Gaming. Have your, any gamers that you know, we have streams from comedians, they're called streams, and we have that. Justin is, he's back here all the time, my son Justin, and Jared loves games as well, my other son. But um, Field of Dreams. Justin, come out here. Yeah, oh, he has on. his headphones on. Let me though. check. He probably won't come on camera. You know what he says to me? He goes, Dad, you don't understand. You don't understand people now. I'll end up a meme. I'm going to be a meme. And I have a career ahead of me. I said, what is wrong with you doing something fun with your dad? You think that's going to end up to be a bad meme? Because you don't know society. Hey, hey Justin, come here. Ah. Come here. <laughs> okay, Justin, come on. He said, you, you, you posted my pictures on Facebook my whole life. The son of a comedian. Dad, show him what it's like to be the son of a comedian. Come here, meme. <laughs> Jeez, not not going to happen now. Just, I was going to tell the Field of Dreams story. Father's Day. When you were, how old were you? He won't even give me that? This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm dealing with. He is so sensitive from being the son of a stand-up comic, being in my act. Oh, God. It is not, it's not, look, I know it's not easy. I have empathy. It's a big thing for me. What, he won't come out? I, well, I told him those are field of dreams stories, so. How about, if, how about if you tell him he, he can't play the games? Oh, please. That's horrible. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> what are the threats we have now? You're a typical I know. mother now. Oh, that's horrible. That's abusive. No, is it, I don't think any threats work anymore. They don't do that. No, I think the take only your thing, phone away. Take your game. What about, I just said, take the games away. I don't think I didn't that say even. phone. I think that's yeah, a little no, severe. For not coming out on screen. Justin! He's 20. Come here. Come tell the story about Field of Dreams. Somebody's requesting it. It's not funny. I told you that already, but it was a big moment in my life. It actually is more of a bonding story with my son. Just! No, I'm not coming. He says he's not coming. All right. He's bigger now, but back then he was really little. And we're, um, it was Father's Day. And uh, this is. Do you know what a VCR is? Everybody know what a VCR is? <laughs> he was little. <laughs> yeah, he it's was VCR little. times. I, I, I know what you know what a VCR is? Okay, we oh, got 27 yeah. that knows what a VCR is. I know what a laser disc is. Is, is it a laser disc? Yeah. yeah. That's some, oh, fancy. Yeah. Those, those lasted like three days. Three, yeah. <laughs> three seconds, yeah. So, so he had a videotape, my favorite movie, because I didn't have a dad growing up. Oh, not a present dad. I A guy who was... Uh, a sperminator, is that what you could say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I didn't have this bonding, but I had, once I had my first son, Justin, I really wanted to bond with him, and he knows that. They just played sports together. We did so many things that, uh, that's how to raise a child, by the way, my opinion is, you give them everything you longed for. So if the past generation wasn't hugging or wasn't paying attention or wasn't listening to you, then you listen, hug, and give them love. So that's what I would do. That's how I would raise the children. So um, I'm sitting there. I still have the Barco lounge. It's a big Barco lounge. It's, it's horrible. It's hideous. But I love it because it's my chair. It's my only thing that's only that's mine no matter what. So I'm in the Barco lounge. He goes, Dad, 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 sit down, sit down. And he turns the TV on. He goes, this is your Father's Day gift. And he, he cues up the videotape to the exact scene that he knew what it would do to me. And it was the end of Field of Dreams when he says, hey dad, you wanna have a catch? <laughs> <laughs> and he looks back at me, he presses play, and he looks back at me, he's like this little devil look like, I got you, I got you, there's your gift. I said, turn it off. <laughs> catch with my father <laughs> so, that was that was my gift again not funny but you asked for it so we'll, we'll conclude it with that spread the word instagram official craig shoemaker twitter on the love master facebook fan page which hopefully you're on right now tell some other people to come over to the page you press like and i'm going to keep on giving you some relief from everything that's going on we take laughter seriously. As much as we take the diseases and viruses seriously, you need to take laughter seriously. Why not? You're really gonna shift your conditions when you do that. It becomes, 
It becomes just, it becomes part of our resistance is built up by the laughter, by the joy. We got to confront it with that. You don't fight it with, no, oh, you're coming to get me. You're coming with, ah, come on, you know, let's go, let's go. Let's have some fun together. Let's gather together, make a village. That's how we're going to approach this, okay? All right, 83 people. I'll see you next time.